morning. We'll bring, bring the public hearing to order Tuesday, July 14th, 2015, 9.30 a.m. Could I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Tedesco? Here. Commissioner Odoricio? Present. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Here. Commissioner Pulowski? Here. Okay, could everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? This morning. Okay. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Okay, so today Adams County Board of Commissioners is pleased to announce the spring winners of the county's employee recognition program, known as the Employee of the Season. The employees honored here today have demonstrated exceptional service to the county and its residents, and it is our pleasure to recognize them for their exemplary efforts. We will first announce the seven category winners before introducing the overall employee of the season. We would like each winner to come to the podium when we announce your name. We will also invite your department director or supervisor to join you at the podium and both of you will have the opportunity to make brief remarks, if you choose, after we have read the award bio. After all remarks have been made, please have a chair in the front. We reserve those chairs for you. And, uh, See you later. Did, yeah. did, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Rita. <laughs> In the interest of time, we'll present checks and certificates at the end of the ceremony, followed by photos. Um, to begin, we will start with Commissioner Eric Hansen. Uh, the first category award winner uh, will receive a certificate of achievement and a check for $50. And the first uh, winner is for the category of making it happen. Uh, would Claudia Els please come to the podium along with Chris Klein, please? <laughs> looks like Chris, maybe Chris is Chris here. I didn't look like Chris. Looks like Chris isn't here. Um, this category honors employees who are able to achieve a, a desired outcome uh, despite facing adversity. Um, the workforce and business center team nominated Claudia, Claudia Els, uh, stating that she is truly a Wonder Woman. Uh, they wanted to recognize her accomplishments, fortitude, and positive attitude. Claudia started with the Workforce Business Center in 2004, uh, has worked in a variety of positions, is now a supervisor. Uh, she has a can-do attitude and is always looking for new ways for her team to succeed. She consistently gives effort without complaint. And what is truly incredible about her, quote, above and beyond willingness, is the fact that she has so much she juggles personally and she still finds time to give to her team. Uh, her husband's in the military uh, and is about to be deployed overseas for the fifth time. That's a, that's a lot of deployments. Um, and each time, Claudia stays behind uh, to go to work, go to school, care for their children, uh, all the while maintaining a positive outlook and providing the support and guidance needed at work and at home. And in addition, she's continued her education and received her bachelor's degree in human services this spring. You just received that in May? Yes. Well, congratulations. <laughs> that's, that's a really hard thing to do while you're working and have kids and, ah, geez, I can't believe that. Uh, and your husband being gone? at the same time. Um, that's really truly amazing. Um, would you like to say a few words? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if not, some other people might say some nice things about you. Um, no, I just want to say thank you, you know, um, to my management team and for the opportunities to be able to do all of those things. To be flexible, um, you know, it just, it takes a lot and um, I couldn't have done it without the help and encouragement of my management and my team as a whole. Um, 
and I appreciate the opportunities. You know, coming up from, I worked, started working as a receptionist, and you know, I was able to move up, and eventually, you know, just with that goal in mind of wanting to be in management someday and CEO one day, you know. <laughs> but I, yeah. <laughs> but I do. I really appreciate the the opportunities that I have here with Adams County because. You know, if I didn't have that flexibility and you know that push and that encouragement, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to get through any of that. And so I really appreciate everybody, in my team, and <laughs> the opportunities. Well, and I'm not Chris Klein, but um, <laughs> this is a bad day for Chris, I guess. So, um, but I do want to say that as uh, Claudia's manager, she has gone from uh, peer to supervisor and done a very nice job of that. Her husband did deploy on Friday, oh. and it, it's, it's been a difficult time for her, but she handles herself with such grace, and we are so fortunate at Adams County to have someone like Claudia representing us in a supervisory position. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I apologize, but it, could you please state your name and title for the record? Chris Klein. No, 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 you're not Chris Klein. <laughs> no? Yeah, no. I've met Chris. <laughs> I'm Jody Camerzel, and I'm a manager at the Workforce and Business Center. And I think that one of um, Claudia's uh, team members would like to speak as well. And yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Olson. Now you guys said everything I was going to say. Um, I'm Kathy Olson. I'm a case manager for the um, adult team at the Workforce Center. I've known Claudia since she started working with us, I think 10 or 11 years ago or a long time ago when she first started. I've watched her grow. Um, she's an amazing, amazing woman, and her nickname is Wonder Woman. She's even got it tattooed on her shoulder. Uh, she's quite the role model for her three daughters. Uh, she teaches them fortitude, um, she just, strength. She's just determined, and she is amazing. So I've been very proud to work with her. We're all very proud to work with her. We're all very proud of her. Um, and I hope she continues her success, as I'm sure she will. So thank you. Thank you. Please, please have, a, have a seat right there in the front. Yeah, Claudia. And I think Commissioner Henry is next. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. And, and Claudia, thank you for allowing us to have your husband to serve this country. Being a mother of a soldier, I, I understand the sacrifices, so thank you so much. Our next awards is for collaborating, helping, and mentoring. Would Aaron Chatterton and I would say Chris Klein, but a manager or supervisor, <laughs> please come forward. <clears throat> This award honors individuals who play an important role by positively influencing others by working towards strategic plan goals, participating in change initiatives and investing time in coaching, mentoring, and being a role model for others. Aaron Chatterton was nominated by coworkers Anitra, Anitra Cortez, who writes, Aaron is a superstar employee who works tirelessly on productivity, clearing black backlogs, and helping out his coworkers. The list goes on. This year, since we are required to show how many cases we are wa working each day, Aaron has helped explain the new process and help ease the uncertainty around the new look of, of Assure. Aaron goes above and beyond to help, never complains, and always has a sense of humor. He freely shares his wealth of knowledge to help staff understand and is constantly encouraging us. Aaron is a wonderful teacher, mentor. He is patient thorough, and understands what a hard job it is to be a community support specialist. Aaron does whatever he can to make everyone's lives easier. Aaron is really an asset to our organization because he makes our work more efficient and effective, and he always does this with a smile. And Aaron, I really appreciate all the work that you do for us because Human Services has done a tremendous amount of change in the last two years. And it has been hard for your team members and for yourself, I'm sure. And I, I thank you and I also thank your department for, for being there and actually being able to do that. And with that said, um, Aaron, do you have anything? Sure. <laughs> I just want to say um, 
that it was an honor to get nominated in the first place, let alone selected. And it's an honor to work at Adams County, and I'm glad that I'm able to serve the citizens of this county. And uh, if I can help my coworkers along the way, then that's awesome. And I do work with a great uh, team of individuals. And I just wanted to say happy birthday to Kina back here in the blue. Happy birthday, Kina, yeah. Thank you. My name is Monica Sorensen, and I'm the Division Director for Community Support Services. And it's a privilege to be here today and to say a few words about Aaron. Aaron comes to work every day, as stated before, with not only with a smile on his face, but with a great work ethic. He not only wants to meet his productivity numbers, he wants to far exceed them. He wants to be the highest performer of the day. And not only that, but Aaron exemplifies the county's cultural norms and values. He's part of the BLT team, which is the backlog team, which has processed over 5,400 cases, which has allowed us to become timely. And so we appreciate all of his efforts and everything that he does for um, Adams County and for the citizens of Adams County. And not only does he do his very best, he then spends time with his peers to make sure that they're also very successful with their daily productivity. So, and also I just want to mention that Aaron was just recently promoted to lead worker. So again. My name's Herb Colvie, and I'm not Chris Klein either. Uh, I am the Deputy Director of Adams County Human Services, and I just want to take the opportunity to acknowledge Aaron and what he does day in and day out. And uh, I get to work pretty early in the morning, and I can tell you that there's always a car that's ahead of mine. There's a, at least two cars, and one of them is Aaron. Uh, he is always there, and it's real early in the morning. Uh, Aaron could be nominated for a number of categories. Uh, he is by far the most productive employee that we have with respect to eligibility determination. Uh, I went back as far as I could, and he sets personal goals that are incredible. I remember uh, one time uh, he uh, mentioned that uh, he had reached 300 case actions in a day, and he said, I think I'm shooting for more. Am I re remembering correctly? He said, I think I can do better. And, and I have to tell you, that's just an incredible amount of work. And, and here's the other nice thing about Aaron, is he's accurate. Usually you trade off productivity for accuracy, and Aaron is uh, certainly accurate in his work, and we have state reviewers that will testify to that. So he's an incredible asset to this county. And I, I want to say that uh, it's honored to, to have him as part of our department. He is a big reason why we've been able to change a lot of our numbers just department-wide because of his leadership and his collaboration with uh, his coworkers, training them on what he does and so forth. So just want to underscore that. And then I want to say something about the, the, the three folks that we have, and that is, is that, that uh, both Carol, who you'll meet here soon, and Claudia, who you've already met, and Aaron, uh, they could have done a lot of things in their lives. They could have been doctors, they could have been lawyers, they could have been auto mechanics, nurses, even elected officials perhaps, but they chose to work for human services. And that says an awful lot about them as well. Their dedication, and we are so lucky to have them uh, serve the citizens of Adams County in our department. So uh, thanks for honoring them. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Aaron, if you want to sit up front, that'd be great. And Commissioner Pulowski, you're next. Well, thank you. You make us all proud, everyone. <clears throat> next, we present the award for extra effort category. With Angela Gallegos and Dave Young, District Attorney, please come forward. The Extra Effort Award celebrates the employee whose unique level of service fosters good business relationships and enhances the county's positive reputation. Angela Gallegos has not, was nominated by co-worker Amy Petrie Beard, who writes, Angela is outstanding. When asked for assistance, she consistently goes above and beyond. In one case, the detective was swamped and we needed to complete follow-up. 
Angela tracked down records that showed the defendant was living at the address eight years ago at the time of the incident. She also located the human services worker who indicated she still had her own notes about her home visits from eight years ago. Finally, Angela re-interviewed the victim to provide a more complete picture. In another case, when she was asked to make a video of a child victim who had been shaken by her, his mom's boyfriend, Angela not only went to the foster parent's home to take the video, but she provided developmental milestones that the child should have met. This information will be critical to allow or to show the jury the extent of the victim's injuries. Angela is willing to drop everything to handle an unexpected request and often has reports completed within an hour. Angela and Dave, would you like to speak? I know Angela probably has a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say something? Um, it's, it's been an honor to a serve. Angela, move closer to oh, the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's been an honor to serve for Dave Young and for the citizens of Adams County. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk a lot more than that, Angela, because <laughs> uh, I'm going to fill in for Chris Klein while I'm up here as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, my name's Dave Young. I'm the district attorney here in Adams and Broomfield counties, and, and I have the privilege of working with Angela in our office. Angela is assigned to our child victim unit in our office, which carries a heavy burden. Um, not only is she seeking the truth in crimes of kids, sometimes they don't even know they're victims of crimes, uh, but she pretty much attends every autopsy when a child uh, dies in Adams and Broomfield counties. And those aren't pleasant things to attend, uh, and she doesn't attend them for <laughs> the pleasant nature of those autopsies. She attends them to find out what the truth is. And sometimes kids die of natural causes, and sometimes they die at the hands of another person. And that's why she's there, is to seek the truth. And she does, she's been doing that for how many years now? Well, 14. yeah, 14 years, which is, you can imagine, uh, is, is pretty traumatic to do that. Uh, but again, she does it to serve the community and to, to seek the truth and to hold those accountable who may treat children badly. The other important thing she does for the office is uh, she conducts what's called a forensic interview. Uh, very few people can talk to kids when they've been victims of crimes and get the truth from those children. Uh, and she has a unique nature of doing that uh, so that we can solve crimes and hold people accountable. Uh, kids don't want to talk about traumatic events, as you can imagine, and, and she's been to some great trainings, and she has a sense of technique that she can talk to these kids to find out uh, what's been going on in their lives uh, to get to the truth of the matter asserted. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Angela part of our investigation unit. Um, she has been one of the investigators since I've been here for a little over 10 years that has said, hey, investigations can do so much more. Uh, we can do so much more for the community. Uh, and I think we're at the point where we're doing a little bit more, right, Angela? Uh, we've got some very competent investigators in our office, uh, thanks to the leadership of Angela. Uh, and we're very lucky and proud to have her. And I know the citizens of Adams County are very proud to have you as part of the DA's office. So well deserved, Angela. Thanks. Nice job. Angela, congratulations, and we truly are proud of you. Thank you. And now, uh, Commissioner Odoricio. Our next category is the good, citizen, good citizenship category. Uh, would Heidi Ellis and Ben Dahlman please come on down? The Good Citizenship Award honors an individual who fosters a spirit of community by building bridges among people who come together for social, business, or intellectual processes. This category also celebrates the humanitarian philosophy of doing the right thing for another person or group, thereby serving as a model citizen to both the community and to the county. Heidi Ellis was nominated by teammate Lynn Kudermash, who writes that Heidi has devoted much of her personal life to serving others through extensive volunteerism. She helps at homeless shelters, the Nine News Health Fairs, and even while on a business trip in Florida, she spent her evenings volunteering at, a Make -A at the Make-A-Wish Foundation. She is active in the community and received countless accolades and awards. Uh, 
from numerous political, religious, and humanitarian organizations. This is a person who cares about making the world a better place, especially for those in need. She embodies good citizenship and deserves recognition for her extensive service to the needs of others. Let's congratulate Heidi and then let Ben and Heidi have a word. Good morning, commissioners, county officers, and guests. I stand before you this morning very humble and honored to be recognized for this award. The Good Citizenship Award, without the needs of the communities, I would, I would not be able to serve. Thank you. Thank you to Lynn Kutamash for nominating me for this award and for taking the time to learn something about the acts of kindness I do through volunteer services. To my peers for your votes, to put me here today, and to the employee of the season committee members and to the board of county commissioners for allowing the employees to have such an awesome recognition program. This type of program does make a difference in individuals' lives, including mine. I say this because I have seen the many smiles, caring looks, feeling of love that acts of kindness makes in people's lives during my 30 years of volunteering. I have worked and currently work with individuals that inspire me to continue to do the work I do in the community that influence social change and civic betterment. I share this award today with all those who were nominated in this category and those who previously received this award. Again, thank you for this recognition. And I would like to challenge you, or I would like to challenge everyone here today to go out in the community and do a kind favor. If the feelings and emotions of kindness Humility, generosity, sympathy, humanity, and compassion penetrates each and every one of us today. The world can be a better place tomorrow. I would like to present each one of the commissioners as well as the uh, county managers with a bookmark I made. And guess if you, you know, I have extras for the guests. And what it says, high five. <laughs> One of the qualities that set humans apart from other warm-blooded mammals is the ability to be kind at heart. Use this unique ability every day. Make a difference in other people's lives. If you don't know what to do to be kind, start by giving a warm hug and a high five. Thank you. We'll, we'll s <laughs> I'll, I'll let you have your moment, Heidi. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll put it in the, the CAFR and highlight the, the most important page with that. And that, that's our comprehensive annual financial report. <laughs> Heidi does work for the finance department in our purchasing division, and, and we're certainly appreciative of her efforts. And good morning, commissioners and, and, and Mr. Chairman. Um, we want to thank you for these employee recognition programs. Um, they highlight the good work of our employees um, that serve the county. And in the case of Heidi, uh, recognizing those good citizen effort, good citizenship efforts that, that she contributes to the community. Um, she seeks opportunities, as, as Commissioner Odoricio read, um, not only locally, but nationally. And in a conversation I had with Heidi earlier today, even globally, so she goes out uh, to Africa uh, once every three years mm -hmm. and, and serves missions and, and, and helps the people of that continent. So uh, that is uh, commendable. and. Uh, I think uh, we all appreciate that effort. Um, Heidi told me also, and I think she said this in her speech, that, that smiles are her reward. And uh, I, I think that's important because when we serve others, uh, not only do others uh, accept that service, but, 
but they, 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 they share their appreciation and that makes us feel good too and I think that's what the Heidi recognizes most. Um, however, today we get to recognize uh, and reward her with, with something more than just a smile and, and, and I'm appreciative of our programs that allow us to do that and uh, the contributions she makes outside of the county. I would encourage all of our employees to follow Heidi's example and find ways to give back to their community and I think she's a good example of, of a person who can do that and somebody we could uh, all model as we leave work at, uh, at the end of the day, maybe we can go do something to serve the community um, in which we live. So thank you so much, Heidi. Thanks for being an example. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> just sorry. I'm only 10 minutes long here, so I'm good. <laughs> I just want to thank Heidi for her uh, passion and caring for community. Uh, her gift of compassion is truly inspirational. Thank you, Heidi, for dedicating so much of your personal time to others. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, should we make a motion that we start every meeting with warm hugs and a high five? <laughs> Only if you hug Commissioner Hansen first. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I can see that going down a whole different path. <laughs> Our next category is for unsung hero. Would Shannon Bucks and Stan Martin please come forward? The Unsung Hero category honors individuals for performing high quality, reliable, and critical work that if not completed, would compromise operations. This person functions behind the scenes, is willing to improve work situations, and does so without fanfare being prompted, or being prompted, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Bucks was nominated by David Okada in the IT department who writes that Shannon is a hero on a team of unsung heroes. Not just for this season, but for years. Shannon has been a key player in the election office and in any, many ways, a linchpin for most fundamental mechanisms of democracy in Adams County. As lead technician, she has been a resource for her colleagues and a point person for many important processes and projects. Whenever changes in staffing, statute, procedures, district precinct boundaries, et cetera, have come along, Shannon's expertise and experience in so many facets of the election office have helped to smooth and mediate the changes. The citizens of Adams County most certainly enjoy better elections on account of Shannon's diligent hard work. Congratulations, Shannon. Thank you. I see, I see you and uh, your peers are out here to make comments, so I'll turn it over to you. Well, I'd just like to thank David for nominating me. It truly is an, a humbling honor to be the first person from the Clerk and Recorders Department in a long time to be recognized. Um, I just come and do my job, but it's very nice to get recognized for that. So thank you very much to everyone that voted and everybody that came out to support. Thanks. <laughs> See, we're already starting with the hugs. A hug and a high five. Thank you, commissioners. You know, Shannon is such an unsung hero that um, I just talked to her a few minutes ago and she says, oh my gosh, I can't wait for this day to just be over with. <laughs> um, Commissioner Tedesco, I just, I wanted to go back to one thing that David put, you know, on his, um, on his nomination and that was, um, you know, that Shannon has been a key player in the elections office and in many ways a linchpin for the most fundamental mechanisms of democracy. And certainly one of the things that we do in the clerk and recorder's office, as you know, is elections and how important that process is um, just to our democracy, to the citizens of Adams County. Shannon comes to work every single day, puts her head down, rolls up her sleeves and just gets to work. I've, in the six months that I've been here, and I'm, and I'm certainly hardly the person that should be recognizing her today because I've been here for such a short period of time. Um, but she does, she comes to work, she works hard. And in the six months that I've been here, I've never heard one complaint from Shannon. Um, and that speaks volumes about, you know, just what a hero that she is. So, um, you know, Shannon, I would like to say on, not only on behalf of Adams County 
and I think the commissioners and the county management. But on behalf of the citizens of Adams County, I just want to say thank you. Hi, I'm Christy Coburn, um, the pretty new chief deputy here in the clerk and recorder's office. So like Stan, I've only been here a couple of months and um, I feel, you know, there are people that know Shannon for so much longer than I do, but when I came in, um, we went, we're going through quite a bit of reorganization and cultural shift in the clerk and recorder's office. And Shannon had stepped up um, during the, the transition between elected officials and really had taken charge and was running the elections department. And she was the uh, acting administrator for a while. And when I was selected to come in and, and get to work, Shannon was so gracious in turning the reins over to me, teaching me the things I need to know bringing that institutional knowledge that only someone who's been at the county for as long as she has can really pass along. And she did it graciously and somewhat maybe kind of gladly <laughs> towards the end. But, but during my time transitioning here and knowing that we wanted to have some management structure and some, and some new you know, processes and procedures in our office, and Shannon and I saw the passion that we're looking for it was clear that we needed her on our team, our management team. So um, fairly recently, about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, we did promote Shannon up from the voter registration lead tech, which is kind of a, a second or third tier position, into our voter records manager. So I'm just so um, pleased to have somebody passionate on our team. And you know, I think it really says a lot that Shannon was nominated by someone outside of the clerk and recorder's office, that she was nominated by um, David Okada in IT. I think that also speaks a lot to her character. So um, thank you very much for allowing us to um, you know, honor our employees. And um, I can't think of anyone um, I'd rather be up here talking about besides Shannon. And to work with Stan Martin for six months with no complaints. Wow, Stan. It's all the hugs. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I got distracted. I'm next. Um, we have uh, Shayla Christensen and uh, Norman Wright, if they could please come forward. Uh, Shayla is our success in practice category winner. Uh, this award honors individuals who play an important role in successful interventions, problem resolutions, or customer improvements. Um, Shayla was nominated by Claire Brewer, who writes that Shayla serves as the internal face of the stormwater division, as she helps the majority of customers at the counter with questions, complaints, and payments of the stormwater utility fee. She maintains a positive attitude and performs her job with pride and dedication. The stormwater financial process has evolved and changed every year since the fee was implemented. With all the changes and adjustments, she has kept a level head and exercised patience, restraint, and adaptability. She has become confident with her knowledge and expertise as many people have been looking to her for answers and guidance. She is always suggesting ways to improve day-to-day -day processes, and processes and has collaborated, collaborated uh, well with an evolving team of stormwater employees to help create an efficient system for the county. Shayla Norman, would you like to say a few words? Well, good morning. <laughs> um, I was floored. I'm so shocked. Uh, I thought that was Andrea. <laughs> um, I was surprised that Claire nominated me, and I, I'm so honored. I did not expect that. I come in every day, just do my job like everybody else. Uh, it's been quite an honor. I started here as a temp. Um, Andrea saw something in me. <laughs> so it's been an honor to work here and grow. Um, I have a great team, great team. Thank you. So, <laughs> so knowing the job you do and the, the issues that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis on behalf of the <laughs> county commissioners, especially myself, thank you so much for what you do. It's a new issue. It's a very controversial <laughs> issue. It is definitely something that you probably struggle with every day, but you do an exemplary job and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's keep the high five train rolling too. There we go. You gotta do a hug. Oh, 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 oh another, hug. yes, yes. <laughs> Stan Martin hug. Um, board and members of, the, chairman and members of the board, um, not only Shayla, did Andrea see something in you, our citizens see something in you because as an ambassador for this entire program, 
I remember a day in 2014 when you had a particularly irate customer who came in. <laughs> There's so many, right? But um, <laughs> one that came in in particular that you handled with such grace and, and such calm and such courtesy that he came back the very next day with a bouquet of flowers Aww. for you. And I'll never forget that because you left an impression for that citizen in the same way that you leave impressions for all of our citizens who you come in contact through this, uh, through this matter. And it left an impression on me too. So thank you for the great work that you do. So Shane was right, she started here as a temp and I absolutely saw something in her right away. She took ownership of the program, um, just being a temporary employee, um, learned everything she could. She actually acted as a lead for all of our customer service reps, taught them everything they needed to know. She would take escalations from them, um, tried to get her on here as a permanent employee, finally was able to do that. Um, she also does, does much more than stormwater. She um, helps out the building safety division. She's studying to be a permit tech. Um, she's learning planning. She's one of those people that tries to learn as much as she possibly can to help as many people as she possibly can. And I myself don't know how I would get through certain days without her. I love her very much. And I think her potential here with Adams County is limitless. So. And, and could you please just, Andrea, Andrea, could you just please tell everybody who you are in your time? <laughs> Andrea Berg, um, I am now the Customer and Process Development Manager. Thank you. All right, now we'll go into the Bright Idea Creativity category. Would Carol is a Gaonigua? Did I come close? Oh, did I? Okay, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> And whoever's stepping in for Chris Klein today. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The winner of this category develops innovative solutions to business challenges, breaks down boundaries, creates new relationships to improve how work gets done, and approaches problems as an opportunity for growth. Carol was nominated by Jim Hall. He writes that through her dedication and calculated inclusion of team members, Carol has successfully launched a resource for future workforce professionals to access clothing and hygiene supplies right here at the workforce, business, workforce and Business Center. Carol's commitment to the successful implementation of such a program has been motivating for the youth team, for, for the youth team reflects a great deal of customer service and furthers the WBC mission. Carol's selflessness has shown through as she obtains clothing items and hygiene supplies from friends and families to get the cash closet project off the ground. Carol has worked closely with her team to celebrate the small wins along the way, such as when a $5,000 grant was approved to purchase additional items to broaden the cash closet inventory, Carol's insight to the daily struggles of youth and adults who utilize the WBC's resources has proven to be invaluable to supplement the items available through other channels. So Carol, first of all, I want to say, as a lot of people know, many years ago I, I was a very struggling single mom. And to be able to get professional clothes, to be able to do an interview, was a matter of me being able to choose to have a roof over my children's head and food on the table. And, and possibly getting a job. I, it was always a challenge of having to be able to do that. So thank you for doing that. And I didn't know you did that because I've been giving all my clothes to the Goodwill. So now I know I can bring it down to the WBC Center. So for all the employees here, when, when we have those professional clothes that no longer fit, as it's happening with me because I'm growing still, <laughs> Um, that we can bring them down and help somebody that definitely needs it. So thank you very much. And would you like to speak? Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. And I want to actually acknowledge all of the people that got nominated as well. I feel um, very blessed and humbled to be among all of these stories. And um, I'm very honored to have this um, opportunity and to be nominated and to be uh, recognized. It's wonderful. Um, I have to say that I want to say that Adams County is really wonderful about letting us be creative and innovative. And 
the opportunities flow from coming from our management team as well. I have to say that, you know, I asked, can I do this? And they said, go ahead. My boss has said, go ahead, write it. Let's see what happens. And it's spiraled. And I think it's important because when you look at what we do, I'm a youth case manager and our youth are at risk. They don't have a lot of opportunities. And yes, we do have money to help out with things, but it's important for them to have in the county for us to provide something to the um, adults and young young adults as well. And so uh, I'm really thrilled that this is moving forward and it's getting bigger. And my goal one day is that we are going to have a warehouse and that it will be accessed by everybody in Adams County because we always say go to Denver and get something. Well, now we have it in Adams County, so come get Great something. Job. So I think that's really important. And um, again, I just want to say that I have the greatest team ever. And thank you, Jim, for nominating me. Um, he's my new partner and I love him to death. And um, I also want to thank my manager and my supervisor and the rest of the WBC. You're all awesome. And thank you for letting us continue to be creative and innovative. Hello, I'm not Jim Hall. And I'm not Chris Klein. I'm Rita McGurr. I'm the um, supervisor. We like you better than Chris. Just okay. thought I'd like to <laughs> yes. Prettier maybe. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm the supervisor for the Youth Succeed program at the Workforce and Business Center. Um, I don't have much else to say. She said it all, and Jim said everything in her um, write-up. It started as a dream, um, and it's uh, become a reality. And uh, Carol would, see, I knew I was going to get emotional. <laughs> Carol would give the shirt off her back to the youth she serves. She's very passionate. Um, and uh, the next project that she wants to do is a Winnebago. And I truly believe she's going to get that Winnebago to go out and serve the kids of the community. Because our kids don't have a lot. The kids we serve are low, they're high risk and they're low income. And um, not only does Carol um, give all at work, she's an active member of the community. She uh, is active with Mapleton School District, um, with her church. She's an amazing woman, mother, wife, coworker, and friend. Thank you. Do we, do we have anyone else that want to come? <laughs> Does anyone else want to, do you want to come forward? Jody. Well, gosh, that's going to be hard to follow. Again, I'm Jody Kamerzaw. I'm a manager at the WBC, and I just want to commend Carol because she saw a need, and instead of complaining about how we don't have this, she said, how can we get this? And um, she brought the idea forward. She had it outlined. Her team got behind her, supported her on it. And that's just who Carol is. Um, she mentors other members on the team, gets them up to speed. She's open to new ideas. Our youth in Adams County are much better for all that she does and brings to work every day. Thank you. And our winner is more than just the winner of this category. She is also the person who was chosen as the overall spring employee of the season. As such, Carol will receive a check for $350 and a trophy in addition to her certificate of recognition. So congratulations. Thank you. That's not fair. I'm by myself. <laughs> you are employee of the season, though, you see. So now we're going to take a moment and per personally present each winner with a check and a certificate, and some of you get two, or at least one of you gets two, <laughs> as well as take a group photo of all the winners. But before we do that, we wish to thank all of the employees joining us today for supporting their peers. We also want to remind everyone that nominations are currently being accepted for the Summer Employee of the Seasons Awards. So please visit My Adams for more information and how we can nominate deserving coworkers in your department or office. So if I could, I'll ask all the winners to come up front. We'll come down, we'll take some pictures, and we'll present certificates and checks.
Get over here and get a picture too. Okay, Miss Shannon, we need smiles. One more. That's perfect, thank you. And then all the winners who we go outside, we're gonna take individual photos as well. Okay, if I could, if I could ask everyone that is clearing the room to please clear the room, we do need to continue with our public hearing. Okay, public comment. Erica, do we have anyone signed up for public comment at this time? We do not. Is there anyone in the audience who did not sign up for public comment that would like to make public comment at this time? Seeing none, elected officials, any communications? Commissioner Pulowski. Mr. Chairman, I, I have a couple. Number one, uh, last uh, Tuesday after uh, we finished our study session, uh, we entertained a group from uh, Jim Beatsy, Poland, who were, they were all people who work either city, county, or state in Jim Beatsy. Jim Beatsy, Poland is a sister city to the city of Brighton. Uh, they too, I, uh, 11 years ago, journeyed there for their 750th birthday, which shows how the United States is very much in its infancy. <laughs> and um, it, it, they were just a great group and it was very fun to have and explain many of our taxes and all the different departments that we visited. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, explain to the commissioners that we did have a group here that was very much interested in the governance of the county. The other thing is that last Thursday, uh, Chairman, not Chairman, Vice Chair <laughs> Odoricio and I attended the Brighton Economic Development um, Awards presentations and they gave us this beautiful <clears throat> award for the DIA Business Development Agreement and so I just wanted to present this to the chairman and I'm sure that they'll find a great place to put this. It's a very beautiful award and I want to just congratulate everyone. 
Well, I will, I will say on behalf of the board, on behalf of the board of county commissioners, this was a, a group effort, and every single person up here spent a lot of time with this, and to be recognized for all that time we spent is absolutely an honor. And I want to thank both Commissioner Pulaski and Com uh, Commissioner Odoricio for attending and accepting the award on behalf of the county. And we'll find a prominent place for this. Um, I'm going to set it right here because, you know, I like the bling. It makes me uh, <laughs> stand out. So, <laughs> uh, Elected officials, any other comments? I have a, a few, just a couple uh, public service amount announcements. Uh, one is that I'm wearing my foster care pin today. Um, the reason being is that uh, Saturday the 8th at the Adams County Fair, we will be having a funnel cake 5K and the proceeds benefit the foster families. And I just wanted to make sure that there is still time for everyone in the, that's listening and in the audience to sign up and run. And I hope to see all of you out there. I, I of course, am not running, but you're more than welcome to come and walk with me because I do, I walk very well. <laughs> so I would like, love to see you out there. It's going to be a great time at the fair. We have a lot of new uh, events going on, concerts, uh, PBR rodeo, uh, all types of things and enjoyment for everyone. And we hope to see all of you out there. Um, the other thing is um, this weekend we're having a cleanup in the Irondale Derby area, and we hope that 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 goes well. And I also wanted to point out that there is a health fair in Federal Heights uh, put on by Cervecio de la Raza, and we hope to have everyone who would like to come out and see from the health fair come out and join us. So that'll be Saturday. Thank you very much. Any other communications from the commissioners? Consent calendar. Do I have a motion for consent calendar? So moved, Mr. Chairman, to accept. <laughs> Do I have a second? Aye. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. New business, County Manager Todd Leopold. Uh, no items for your consideration. Thank you very much. County Attorney Heidi Miller. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, on my agenda for this morning is the resolution approving the amendatory intergovernmental agreement to the intergovernmental agreement on annexation and the intergovernmental agreement on a new airport dated April 21st, 1988, between the city and county of Denver and Adams County, subject to approval by the voters of Denver and Adams County. And I would ask you to approve this resolution this morning um, and the attached intergovernmental, a mandatory intergovernmental agreement subject to voter approval at the November election. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff on this? No questions. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment on this? Seeing none, commissioners, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a brief comment. Um, I would move to approve a resolution uh, amending the intergovernmental agreement to the intergovernmental agreement on annexation and the intergovernmental agreement on the airport, new airport dated April 21st, 1988, between the city and county of Denver and Adams County, subject to approval by the voters of uh, Denver and Adams County. Um, I, I just want to I just want to point out, uh, Commissioner Tedesco made a, a comment that I think was a very good one, and that is. This really was a group effort. Um, there were actually seven different commissioners that had involvement in this one way or another, uh, going back all the way to 2012 when Denver started to raise this issue of what was going to happen with Airport City. Um, and we made the commitment that whatever it is that we were going to do, that it wasn't going to be a political issue, that this was going to be something that we all agreed on or we weren't going to do it. Um, and it's really hard uh, when you're talking about new commissioners coming in. Um, originally with Commissioner Henry and Commissioner Tedesco, I think there was some frustration because they're sort of like, well, we just kind of walked into this thing. I remember going into the Denver Post editorial board meeting and thinking, well, we, some, one of you said, I don't remember which one, that, uh, that geez, you know, we just got here and, you know, all of a sudden we're talking to the Denver Post about this issue. Um, 
And then we went through a, a really long negotiation and, and uh, added two additional brand new commissioners uh, because the voters uh, expanded the commission from three to five uh, with Commissioner Odoricio and Commissioner Pulowski. And, and um, you know, I, I, understandably so, that's a lot to swallow in a very short period of time. Um, and I, I appreciate that everybody came together on this. It wasn't always easy. Um, I don't think everybody, we didn't always agree all of the time uh, in the middle of it, but you know, we worked our way through it and got to agreement in the end. Um, and uh, you know, it, was, it was really a, a group effort amongst a lot of, of different people, uh, as well as the staff. Um, staff that isn't here that worked on this agreement uh, staff that uh, uh, that we hired, you know, from the outside, you know, folks that um, that um, no longer even work for Adams County, um, multiple elected officials, multiple people throughout the county. I'm sure that the number totals in uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of people that were involved on our side in making this agreement go forward. That's a pretty Herculean effort um, amongst everybody uh, for an agreement that. Uh, took a few years to get done and, and uh, let's hope we don't have to do it again for another 27 years at least. Um, so I appreciate everybody's involvement. Uh, it, was, it was really a lot of work and uh, I think everybody did a great job. And I'd, I'd like to add to, to Commissioner uh, Hansen's comment about when uh, Commissioner Tedesco and I were first elected, uh, our previous commissioners didn't really debrief us before we got sworn in. And we had exactly four days to understand the entire 1988 intergovernment agreement, plus all that had happened during executive sessions between the previous commissioners and Commissioner Hansen, uh, before we sat in front of the Denver Post editorial board. Uh, it, it was a dunking, for sure, drinking from a fire hose, but it didn't take us long to get our legs under us. Um, we knew that we were in for a very difficult process, and it was. It was a, it, to say that it was an easy process would put those whole two and a half years um, that we had spent on it as something very minor, and it wasn't. We, we did a very thoughtful process. Six months ago, we were lucky enough to have Commissioner Pulowski and Commissioner Odoricio join the team, because I believe more voices at the table give us more brain power on actually coming up with solutions. Um, so to my fellow commissioners, I, I appreciate all the effort that you put into it. There were many, many days where we just didn't think we'd get to this point to where we're at now. And I really, truly believe that this is a good agreement. Um, and I hope that the voters of Adams County, after they take a look at it, also feel the same way. So we have a motion and a second. Can we take a vote, please? Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> County Attorney, I believe you have one more. I do. Uh, commissioners, I would also ask that you go into executive session today pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 246. 4024B for the purpose of receiving legal advice regarding the county's ability to impact construction defect litigation. So moved. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much, and I believe that concludes our business for today. We will take a five-minute break and resume with land use at 1035.